Now, hey, what's good, runners? It's a very special day. It's Graham from Shipment from Shiloh. You know me, we're friends. Anyway, I got Rain and Reverie today. It's a big deal. It's real. Uh, it takes place in Chicago, so I'm ready. I got, uh, I had some deep dish pizza today. Uh, I got a glass of Malort. And we're gonna, we're gonna open this box up. Come on in, join me, come on, let's go. Let's just turn this little, little boy down here. All right. Uh, I got a, the, there's, uh, there's no time. Get out of here, Katara. We're done with you. It's rain and reverie time. That's what I gotta say about it. Let's open this bad boy up. Um, so the box is weird, right? Get the shrink wrap off. Just get rid of it. Who even needs shrink wrap? I don't, not anymore. Because I own this. This is mine now. Look at that box art. Mmm. The sweet, sweet teal turquoise color. Alright, so the box is weird because it's not like a normal... Well, I, I shouldn't say normal anymore. It's, it's not like the other deluxe expansions that we've gotten from FFG for Netrunner before. Although I heard a rumor that this actually operates uh, like an Arkham Horror box, right? So... Uh, it is collapsible. Some people seem to like that because it means that uh, you, if you say, if you're a box saver, then um, you know then it's gonna then it's gonna flatten out. Uh, you can uh, pause the video if you want to see what the back of the box is all about. I'm gonna see if I can try to get this bad boy in focus here. Some sample cards there. I don't think this one was even spoiled. Uh, ahead of time, I think the rest of them were. Uh, but you can read all that good stuff on your own time. Pause the video, rewind if you really want to watch it. Uh, looks like this this old boy is gonna collapse at some point, but I'm gonna figure out how to do that later. No time, get it out of here. Three individual packs, but notice what is this? The the limit one per deck cards. Wait, there's. See, it's different, because normally they just have one copy of each, in each pack. Uh, and so then you get three packs, and so then, boom, you got your your three copies. But this time, no, they don't have it. So, anyway, let's get, uh, let's get started with your boy, Nathaniel Hall. Get this out of here. Get this. There's no time. There's no time, I say. Get this out. Alrighty, so it appears that FFG has figured out how to print one copy of stuff at a time. So let's go ahead and uh, unload all these bad boys here. Let's do a couple copies of these. If you've been following some spoilers, uh, either from the FFG articles or just from people actually spoiling the cards on their own, you will have probably seen a lot of these already. Um, how can I arrange this so it is most aesthetically pleasing to you, the viewer? I don't know, man. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna uh, we're gonna zoom in on this hoss. How do I do that? Using the power of science and specifically game show. All right, let's uh, let's zoom in on in and get the get some of these bad boys in focus here so that you can actually see what's going on um, focus up dog what you doing get on it get on this focus train uh, maybe if they hit it a couple times what happens if I hit it a bunch no did it work okay well I tried um, anyway, feel free to pause the video at any point if you really want to give these cards a good read through. A lot of these have already been spoiled, so you may already know what all of these do. But uh, I don't. I've been trying to avoid spoilers as best I can. Uh, so Nat Hall looks like they're bringing back the Liberated Anarch, or at least they're trying to give you some money if you have a few number of cards in your grip. And you know what they say about Netrunner is if you want to make something viable, you got to make it profitable right um so let's switch up the music here now that we're actually like looking at some stuff um let's see some other cards that they have spoiled 
uh, Cradle, which is the new Yogg, if you want to think of it that way. Two credits to break any number of subroutines. Seems pretty cool. Uh, guinea Pig. Uh, trash Your Grip, gain 10. Spend 4, so uh, it's a single click for 6. Uh, seems pretty strong. Uh, patchwork lets you trash a card from your hand once per turn and lower the player install cost of that card by two, which is kind of wild if you think about it, right? Because, like, uh, what about events? What, you can play events for cheap now, too? What is this? I always like that uh, Anarch encourages you to play redundant cards and then makes up for it by giving you stuff to do with those dead cards. Uh, Would have liked to see more in that design space. Um, all right, so uh, let's see what else we got. Hijacked router for the Anarchs. Um, when the corp creates a server, he or she loses one. Some people want that to be like a core rule of Netrunner, just to fight asset spam. I'm glad they don't, because I do enjoy me some Estelle Moons. But, um, and you can trash hijacked router on a successful run on archives to make the corp lose three. Uh, seems interesting. Seems like a meta call. I'm not sure if it's going to see any play, but I think it's really fun. Um, Divide and Conquer. What does this guy do? I don't even know, man. Yo, focus up. Camera. Get on my level. What are you doing? All right, this guy says make a run on Archives is successful. After accessing Archives, access one card from HQ, then access the top card of R&D. What? Archives matters? You can get accesses. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I've always thought that archive should matter a little bit more than it does. So, I love seeing that. And then lastly, we've got uh, District 99. Not to be confused with District 9, the movie from South Africa. Uh, but we got uh, District 99, CD location. It's very important that it's very CD and also is a place. Uh, first time each turn a program or piece of hardware is trashed from any location place a power counter on district 99 so that includes from your hand so if you're like drawing from zero and you trash a program or hardware with that wild damage works dang click three power counters add a card that matches the faction of your identity from your heap to your grip uh oh recursion it's unique i like that it seems very powerful three is certainly not cheap uh, but it's uh, deja vu on a stick a little bit and uh, it's three influence so it's you know you might do this as like a one of or two of in another faction maybe um, that's crazy let's talk about siphon recursion right anyway that's anarchs we love it we love the anarchs they're great but you know who else is cool Whichever faction's next in the stack of cards. Looks like it's the blue faction. Let's lay these boys out. Um, so, again, if you've been watching the articles uh, that they've posted online, uh, you have seen Liza Talking Thunder already spoiled. And she seems very interesting to me. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how to play with her, man, right? Uh, it seems like it's gonna be really easy to go tag me, but also I love paper tripping, so that's cool. Liza Talking Thunder, first time you make a successful run on a central server, each turn draw two cards and take a tag. 50 deck size. That's a cool thing that uh, I like playing around with. I really like increased deck size decks because I'm making runners that are 47 and 48 cards anyway, so like, why not just give me a better power for it? I love it. Uh, her console is Paragon. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus up here. Uh, Paragon gives you a memory because it's a console. Duh, it costs three. First time you make a successful run each turn, you may gain one. And look at the top card of your stack. If you do, you can add that card to the bottom of your stack. So it gives you a little bit of soft filtering. But it also basically fills in that slot that uh, Desperado used to do. Uh, so now this is officially known as Despacito because... It gets you money, like Desperado does. It just gives it to you more slowly, slowly. That's my Justin Bieber impression, and it's very bad. Um, so I've already seen a lot of decks pop up today that are using 
this guy, Hot Pursuit, make a run on HQ if successful, gain 9 and take 1 tag. But that's on successful trigger, so it's before you access. You can use that money to trash or uh, do whatever you want to do with Das money. Uh, you do take a tag. You know, obviously this looks like it's great in Gabe. Looks good in uh, Steve. Looks good in a lot of criminal decks. But you know who else it looks good for? Jesmender. Bringing her back. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk programs here. Uh, we've got uh, Tycoon, uh, which is a Fractor. I like that all the factions got a breaker for their uh, secondary type uh, in this box. Come on, let's go, let's go. Bring it in. You can focus. I believe in you. Uh, man, this webcam is just killing me right now. Uh, whenever I encounter with a piece of ice that uh, used Tycoon to break Serpentine and ends the corp, gains two. Gains two. Wait a second, this only costs one. Wait a second, it breaks two barrier subroutines for one credit. It pumps two for three strength, and it's one strength. So this is like a really good breaker, but it gives the court money. Seems really bad in a faction that wants to deny the court money. So obviously that's got to be a, a point of contention, a point of balance here. Uh, bankroll. Whenever you make a successful run, you may place one credit from the bank on bankroll. Trash at instant speed, take all credits from bankroll. Obviously, you know who loves this? Geist. Why? It's got a bit on it. Who else? Pirate Haley, probably, if she's got influence. You know who else? Anyone who makes runs? That's everybody. Seems like a good card. Moving on to some resources. Uh, you got Miss Bones on your left. Uh, place 12 credits from the bank when you install her. Use these credits to trash installed cards. So, anti-asset spam? Question mark? Kind of like a better scrubber in faction? I don't know. Seems like we've got a lot of anti-asset cards in Katara and in this box. Uh, seems fine, I guess. I mean, I like the anti-asset stuff. It's just that it doesn't come up that often, right? Uh, we also got the Thunder Art Gallery, which I've seen some people playing around with. First time you avoid or remove a tag each turn, you may install a card from your grip, lowering its install cost by one. So you spend one click, clear a tag, but you get a credit back to install a card from your hand, same click. Uh, I think that's really good. Uh, it makes giving yourself tags not terrible. And even if you only have the core set with this, uh, it turns uh, Crash Space into sort of a viable econ engine. And then, of course, you can combine it with Liza Talking Thunder. You can combine it with... Um, what are those? Uh, what's that? Uh, credit kiting, uh, which uh, installs something for an eight credit discount, but gives you a tag, and it works with uh, 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 rogue trading is the other one. So I don't know, man. Uh, part of the criminal color pie has always been that they are the ones who are good at removing tags. So I'm glad that there is. Uh, sort of a build around gaining and losing tags and it makes all of those granular tag effects like high profile target or the one that gives you makes the runner lose money and gain money based on uh, how many tags you have what is that market forces I can't remember um, but uh, it makes all those cards a lot more interesting too tags really should be granular get out of here uh, freaking um, what's the one? What's the what's the what's the one that's uh, oh close the counts? Get out of here, close the counts because you're too punishing for a single tank. Um, so here's something interesting. Just pulling out the shaper cards here. Uh, oh, I was like, there's only one of these. What happened? But we're already on to pack two. Get psyched. Dun dun dang. All right, shipper cards and oh, 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 there she is. There she is. Look, Psych Mike. Look how, look how cute she is. And this, and this puffy 80 shoulders. How can you do that? I have a problem with that card. And the problem is that the artist made her too good looking. What's her deal? Why she gotta do that to us? It's terrible. Here's the new ID, Akiko Nisei. Love the flavor. Uh, she's sort of a big sister, according to lore, 
to uh, Caprice Nisei because they named their waves of clones in alphabetical order. So uh, now Caprice Nisei, uh, her backstory, which is from the Android board game, says that Caprice is uh, uh, kind of haunted by her psychic powers. Well, you know, Akiko, an earlier iteration of that clone line, uh, is a head case. So she's clearly not dealing that well with uh, her psychic powers. But she lets you play a side game first time we, or whenever, whenever, whenever you access cards from R&D. It doesn't have to be a successful run. If you get accesses another way, like with that Anarch Run event that uh, lets you access, well, I don't know why you'd import this, but you could, you could. Uh, you know, this gives you accesses on R&D without even having to run uh, on R&D. So whenever you access cards, play a side game. Whenever. Dang, that's great. Uh, if you win and the corp loses by spending the same number of credits, access one additional card from R&D. And then not only that, she gets a freaking link. I know they dock her a little bit on influence, but like, dang. Dang, this is real good. Like, this is just good. This is just good stuff. Uh, I wish that she had, like, cards here that would let her access cards from R&D to trigger her ability. Boom! Console. Mind's eye. That's right. One memory. Uh, you make three successful runs in R&D, get counters every time, spend those counters, access the top card of R&D. Did you ice it up so much? I don't care. The power counters can't be purged. I'm going to just build this up all game, and then I'm going to take all your stuff. You could slam down an Xer and then click this and you get to access two cards, I think. Probably? I don't know. I haven't read Xer re recently. Don't get in my face. Don't at me. What, what else does she get? She gets a mash, a mache, machete. She gets a mache? I don't know. It's not even focusing, so like we can't even read this stuff. Uh, it's a piece of hardware. It says the first time that you trash an access card each turn you may place power counters oh my god get with it the people are watching they gotta know uh, place power counters on mache equal to that card's trash cost three power counters draw a card um, that seems pretty good in Anarch with imp or freedom um, oh you get power counters equal to the trash cost it's not just one so uh, so if you're imping like ice and stuff, it doesn't get you anything. But if you are actually like trashing assets and stuff, you get a bunch of power counters to draw. Uh, so this is kind of like an astrolabe in that it's good against acid spam and it lets you draw against acid spam. Um, but it doesn't uh, trigger clicklessly. No, it does. But it doesn't take up your console slot, so that's kind of cool. Um, all right, that's some um, hardware. What else we got? Um, we got an event and a resource. So um, let's talk Psych Mike. First of all, too good looking or just good looking enough? I don't know. You decide. Uh, first time successful run and R&D ends each turn. Game one for each card you access from R&D. Play Maker's Eye, three. Uh, you use Nayashia. Uh, it gives you an extra credit. Um, what else? Deep data mining? Make all that money back. I really like Psych Mike and Deep Data Mining decks. Uh, I like my Inversificator Kit deck, Swipsy Swapsies. Yeah, real good. Uh, you also get Insight as an additional cost to play this event. Oh, it's a double. Court may look at the top four cards of R&D, arrange them in any order, and then reveal them to you. Uh, I'd like to see this card in action because on paper it doesn't look amazing, but I can see playing this doesn't require a run. Just do it. You just do it. And then... You just, you look at them and you just get it. Seems good, as they say. Let's talk programs. Uh, on your left, you got uh, Ica, which is a killer. Um, Ica has to be hosted on a piece of ice. You pay two to host Ica on said piece of ice. Yo, camera, get with it. Get on my level. Let's go. I don't got all night. The people are watching. Um... You can break... Oh, this, yeah, this is a killer. What did I say? I, I think I said that right. Um, you spend one credit to break up to two subroutines. I right, go, oh my god. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder this thing. Let's go. Um, one credit, break two subroutines on a host sentry. Two credits, plus three strength. Wow. 
Look at that. We also got uh, Kayuban, which is very important that every major uh, expansion or cycle or whatever for uh, Netrunner has a weird to pronounce shaper program. The name has to be very weird. It's, uh, it's a long-standing tradition in the Netrunner community. Um, uh, Kayuban says, install Kayuban only on a piece of ice. Game two, whenever you pass said ice. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know why my camera is not focusing anymore, but it is driving me up a wall, and I hate it. Um, well, I would tell you guys that that's all of the runner cards for this box, except that that's a lie. There it is. There it is. Quick, pause it right now. Now you can read it. Great. All right, I did my due justice. You guys buy this box. Read it for yourself. Um, yeah, I would be lying if I said that this was, these were the only runner cards for uh, this box. But in fact, it's not. Um, <coughs> we got some mini factions. First, D -D -D DJ Fenris. Uh, this is the one that lets you host Gmods, so you want to be Geist, but don't want to start as Geist? Seems weird, because Geist gives you draw, but maybe you're Haley. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you are Geist, and you want to be also Haley, uh, which are Gmods. I think, uh, what do we say? Ketzel's a Gmod. Noise was a Gmod. R.I.P. Good night, my sweet prince. And, uh, but you don't even have to be one of those IDs to start, right? Like, you'd be Adam. And then freaking play Pirate Haley if you want and break stuff. Speaking of Adam, boom, Algernon. What my favorite thing about Algernon is that it costs zero. This number right here, very good. Anyway, all this artwork is also good too. Uh, it's an Adam program. It's unique. And it says when your turn begins, focus up this camera. When your turn begins, what does it say? You may pay two credits to gain a click. And then if you do, you have to trash Algernon at the end of your turn if you did not make a successful run this turn. Um, so that's cool. I don't know why. Why? Why are you being why are you being so difficult? Dumb camera. It's thinking about stuff. It's thinking about it. There it goes. Look at that. Uh, let's talk Sunny. She's talking office supplies. Let's talk donuts. We love donuts. The people love the donuts. Uh, reduce the play cost of office supplies by one for each link you have. Which means Sunny is paying two to gain four or draw four cards. Well, uh, clicking a card for two credits is bad. C, infiltration. However, uh, if you get up to four link, if you're playing a big link build, then uh, basically if you're not on power taps, right, then this becomes more hedge funds. But who's playing it for that? You're playing this because it's going to draw you four cards and you got a 50 card deck because you're Sunny. Get out. Reboot. Great TV show. We loved it. Uh, everyone watched it in the 90s because it was the coolest thing. Also, they had computer graphics. Also, if you didn't watch Reboot, it was very bad. Don't look it up. Uh, Apex card. Make a run on archives. Successful. Five cards from your heap. Boop. Face down. Back on the table. Remove Reboot from the game. Uh, this is a Bodot code. That means... Uh, I am reborn? Is that what that means? I don't know. It's on Netrunner Dorks. Look it up. Anyway, it only costs one. That's pretty good. Get your five cards back. If you've already got a simulator on the table, then you start flipping those boys, which I love. And, um, you know, this is probably a way to get around needing Levy if you are on more of an APOC. Uh, yeah, more on an APOC build. If you are doing a full, like, uh, Apex engine build, you might still need the Levy. Uh, anyway. Neutral cards. We got them. They're great. Note that there is only one DJ Fenris in this box. Uh, so, DJ Fenris. Uh, and that's because it says limit one per deck. So, again, FFG figured out that you only need one of each ID and one of limit one per deck cards. Curious to see how that affects their other LCGs, uh, like Thrones, L5R, Arkham said Lord of the Rings to a lesser extent um, moving on to HP 
Let's talk sports. Because Chicago loves sports. Speaking of Chicago, time out. Malort break. Cheers. Oh, it burns. Oh, it tastes so good. And so bad at the same time. Hey, if you don't know what Malort is, look it up. Uh, cause it's a, it's a real, it's a real Chicago beverage. That's what that is. It's a real Chicago thing. All right. So I have not been looking at all the spoilers because this is the last box that I'm ever going to be surprised by with new Netrunner cards. Uh, that being said, I already know what most of them are cause I didn't read all the articles. Hey, here's an HBID that rewards you for having small agendas. Sports medal. Go big, go home. I love it. Uh, whenever an agenda is scored or stolen, gain two credits or draw two cards. Um, I love IDs that do this. I love PE and I love Argus because I think low, uh, I think high agenda, high agenda density decks are just very interesting in general. Uh, but you really have to be rewarded for it because uh, agendas traditionally have not been strong enough for you to want one-pointers in your deck. There's very few one-pointers that are actually worth including. Uh, question mark. Is this an agenda that's worth one point that's worth including? When Hyperloop Extension is scored or stolen, the corp gains three. So scored or stolen is obviously very good text to have on an agenda, as we've seen. Um, I'm going to say, because, you know, runner steals this or... They score it, and you gain five. It makes it really good for rush. Um, I would also consider putting this in an Asa Rush deck because, although HB has a lot of good tools for rush, they don't have great economy, uh, particularly for their agendas. Unlike uh, Hostile Takeover for Wayland, for example. Um, <coughs> uh, let's talk events. What are these operations? All right, let's see. This is one that I have seen, um, which is, I'm going to see if I can put all these up and have it focus on all of these. It seems, seems like a lofty goal. I don't think I can do it uh, because this camera is lacking at best. And if you can't even focus up, then why do I even buy you? Here's fast break. Um, cost you four. X is the number of agendas in the runner score area. See, this is this is my kind of card. Uh, you're gonna gain that many credits, draw up to that many cards, so you don't even you can if they've got four agendas, but you only want to draw two, then only draw two. Then after you do that, install up to X cards in a single remote server or protecting it for one click. This seems amazing. This is going straight into an Ace of Rush deck. I swear, it's gonna be great. Divert power. Here's something I have not seen yet. Derez any number of cards. You may res a card, lowering its res cost by three for each card that you derez this way. Interesting. So it costs you two. This seems. Oh, but it can be ice. I was about to say, like, I'm trying to think of even like a big old asset that you want to reduce. You know, by like six or something. If you reduce, if you de-res two cards, and then you res something with a discount of six, you pay two for it. That's kind of like a hedge fund, except that you had to de-res two cards to do it. Um, but more importantly, you could de-res like freaking team sponsorships or other stuff that like is a zero. You know, you could re like install. And res a Rashida Jaheen, and then later that same turn play this. Maybe get like a discount of nine. Discount of nine on resing a piece of ice. That could be good, uh, but definitely something that's going to be wonky. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to play it, but I don't know. It seems interesting. Game changer for six. Better be a game changer. That's all I got to say. Gain a click for each agenda in the runner score area. Remove Game Changer from the game instead of trashing it. It's got a trash cost of two. Uh, yeah, that's freaking great. Pay six, 
it's like super biotic labor, right? So if they got three agendas in the score area and you want to score out of five for three, can you do it? They got three agendas. You spend one click, so you go from three clicks down to two. And then you gain five. So no, unless it's already on the table. One short, huh? Uh, you know what's going to come back with this uh, whole sports medal thing is going to be domestic sleepers because it's a two for zero. That seems good. Anyway, I like it. Moving on. <coughs> okay. Well, here. I'll do the ice first because I don't know that much about it. Meridian. Um, Meridian is a barrier. It says game four and end the run. Unless the runner adds Meridian to a score area as an agenda worth minus one agenda point. Wow, that's wild. If you can cheat this into play with an uh, install cost, then you're really not losing anything. And they get minus one points. Or they can... Or you get a, to res this for basically free. And end the run. Or they pay three every time they want to go through this with paperclip. I don't know, man. Seems good. What else we got? Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper has six strength if you res it this turn. So the first time you res it, pay three, six strength. Draw up to three cards. Reveal up to three agendas in HQ and or archives. Shuffle those agendas into R&D and the run. Huh. So you put this on HQ. And then they... Then, then you res it when you're flooded, I guess. And um, now what do you do? You where's the focus point for this? Uh, okay, so you res it when you're flooded. It's strength six, so it fires. Then you get to do some mirage business where you draw a bunch of cards and shuffle a bunch of agendas back into your deck. But they can only be agendas. And then it keeps them out. But then in the future, it costs them two to break? That's not terrible. I mean, that's like Enigma, right? Except Enigma makes them lose a click, and this has six strength for the first time that you res it. And then... And then you get then you get the cards. All right, well that seems fine. Here's what I'm super excited about, and if you don't get the reference, this is time for you to learn. Three to res, three to trash. Those are not great numbers on this upgrade. This is Giordano Memorial Field. Uh, I had Giordano's Pizza today, and it's the best deep dish in all of Shiloh. Fight me. Luminati's pretty good though. Uh, Gino's East, get the hell out. No one likes you. Uh, that's why this is. See, it's like it's like pizza, right? Because it's like a slice of pizza. Hey, if you think pizza should not be eaten with a knife and fork, you can go to hell. Whenever there's a successful run on this server, end the run unless the runner pays two for each agenda in his or her score area. What? What? How do you? Even if they only have two, even if they only have like I stole two Vitruvii or whatever, they have to pay four just to get in. What? This is dope. I love it. I'm gonna put two in all of my decks right away. How much influence is that? How much influence is that? How much? How much? Show me the. Show me the. Is that? Is that just? That's just two. Only two influence. All right. I can deal with that. Okay. We're moving along. We're doing great. Everything is great. Let's go to Jinteki. Our boys at Jinteki. This was not supposed to be so much of a review, but I kind of just figured I could like throw my cards out and then you could read them. But instead, things are not focused. So we kind of got to do it the slow way. And I don't love it, but hey, I'm glad you're here. And if you hate it, maybe just, uh, maybe just, uh, fast forward. You could do that. I'm not going to fight you on that. I could never fight you on that. 
Uh, hey guys, guess what? Pack three. That's pretty exciting, right? I love that. Get out of here. Geki. Ooh, look at this. Look at this fun little boy. I love it. Well, all these cards are already disorganized, so... In classic Graham style, I am a hot mess. Let's talk IDs. Saraswata. Saraswata mnemonics. Also, if you don't know, this is mnemonics. Uh, the M is silent. So, don't. Don't say that. Uh, this art, by the way, has been on like the FFG website for like Netrunner stuff that you can download, like Android wallpapers. So, get that. Um, all right. So, for clicking a credit, you can install a card from HQ, put an advancement token on it. So you save the install click and then you advance it. But you can't score or res that card until your next turn begins. So it's like a pseudo Lucian notion on a stick effect, uh, which uh, is fine. It's fine. Lucian is fine. Everything's great. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea how to build around this. Don't even get me started. All right. Jumon. Uh, Jumon is a six for two. What is this madness? Mandatory upgrades was barely playable, and I gave you an extra click for the rest of the game. So if you scored it out, you were like, I win. Uh, so Jumon better be really powerful. And I would love to tell you about it if this darn camera decided to work for me cool just shake it a bunch that's how you get it to work six for two when your turn ends place two advancement tokens on a card installed in a server what are you kidding me two advancement tokens for a card in a server that seems it seems good right um but it's when your turn ends so you can't score out after this that's a shame so it's not broken fast advance so I guess Jinteki shell games right there's gotta be some way to like actually use this to like do things instead of um whatever right alright you got the uh, beekeeper Isabel uh, when your turn begins you can remove an advancement token from an installer card to gain three alright so you can turn some of this advancement stuff into a little bit of money that's fine um Quick question, does Saraswata have to be advanceable? And the answer is, uh, no. So you could say, use this to install Beekeeper Isabel. And then you res her, and then for, you res her for free. Oh, now, we're, now we're getting somewhere. Here we go. Neurostasis can be advanced. Uh, pay three. This is like a that uh, Cerebral Overrider. Pay three when the runner accesses it. Choose an installed runner card for each advancement token on Neurostasis and shuffle the chosen cards into the stack. Is this better than Aggressive Secretary though? Mm, maybe in like Ismari or something where you want to rip up all their, their board state? Or PU, maybe, where you can do damage directly to the stack. I don't know. It seems cool, and at the same time, maybe not good. Um, where's the... I got a, I got a Hangeki here. So here's the reprisal that we never got in, in the Katara cycle. Uh, play only if the runner trashed a corp card during his or her last turn. Choose an installed corp card. The runner can access that card. If he does, remove Hangeki from the game. Otherwise, head Hangeki to the runner's score area. The agenda worth... Minus one agenda point. So you put like a billion advancement tokens on something, and then you then they like go trash something, right? Trash your Rashida Jones, and you're like, boom, Hangeki. Here's a six advancement tokens on a on a June bug. Access or minus one point. Um, I think minus one point plays are really tough. I'm not sure how to best do that. That's a discussion for another day. What's this upgrade do? Dakuma. Daruma. Daruma Matata. What a wonderful phrase. 
When the runner approaches this server, Trash Daruma, if you do, swap a card installed in the server with a, either another card installed in a server or with an agenda asset or upgrade from HQ. So, you res this. The runner approaches the server, meaning that they've gotten past all the ice. So, you have to res this. I think they get a jackout window, is my point. Because either you have to res it in the caprice window, which is as they approach the last piece of ice, or as they're approaching the server, but before they commit to accessing. Gotta look that timing up. If you do, swap a card installed in the server with either another card installed. So let's say you got like a like a cool, cool brain trust and it's just hanging out. They're like, I'm going to run it. And so you're like, cool, I'm going to trash Daruma and I will change that brain trust into a snare. And instead of getting two points, you will get three net damage. Two to face. It seems like it's really hard to slot. I'm not sure if that's strong enough. Especially because like... It's got a two trash cost on there too, so it kind of thins out your, makes your um, deck more porous. Um, let, I don't even know what either of these do. So let's talk thim, Thimblerig. Th thimblerig? When your turn begins, or whenever the runner passes Thimblerig, you may swap Thimblerig with another installed piece of ice. When your turn begins, or whenever the runner passes this ice, you swap it with another installed piece of ice. And the run. So if they don't have a Kogate Breaker, this becomes a really good gear check because you're just like boop, 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 boop. Wherever, wherever, wherever you want to get in, you will no longer get in. Um, or when they pass it, you can swap it with another installed piece of ice. So, you, I mean, you wouldn't just ride this down though. Because it only costs you one to break. So. I don't know. Seems weird. You know what? This might be a nice solution to like. Positional ice. You know that old thing that everyone does. Uh, speaking of everyone doing it. Uh, you could. It's only one influence. What else we got? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, Otoroshi, you can place three advancement tokens on a card installed in a server. If you do, the runner accesses that card unless he or she pays three. So, just to have Junebugs hang out, and then you're like, boom, spend two, five strength. Five strength sentries are no joke. And you want to spend two on this? This costs a freaking uh, uh, mongoose. Five. Five to break this. I guess uh, Nanotech is probably paying four because or this is in like a four deep server or some crap. That's super taxing. But you gotta have I don't know. This, it's weird that the runner gets to choose if they access or not by paying the three. Anyway, you just have Junebugs hang out I guess. I don't know, man. Filling your deck with a bunch of traps is a really good way to just, like, wonder why the runner isn't running because you're not presenting any kind of actual threats, and then you just lose. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think I like it. Now we get to move on to my good old yellow boys. Cheers, man or ever, right? Mmm. Ugh. Ugh, it's like gasoline meets rubbing alcohol. So good. Hey, let's talk about Acme. Uh, the runner's considered to have this. Yo, runner's considered to have one additional tag, even if they have zero, during encounters with the outermost piece of ice protecting any server. That's cool because it's positional ice. Wait a second, that's not cool at all. Also, people are like, Pachinko, but we can play Pachinko in this. I don't think you want to play anything that you wouldn't play otherwise. What it means is that your single ice IP blocker data ward does something. And then when you install the data raven on the outside of it, it still does something. That's just my two cents. 
I don't know anything. Um, let's do fly on the wall. It's a three for one. It's a bad shell. What does it say? When you score fly on the wall, give the runner one tag. I don't like it. NBN has some really good three ones. I would almost rather have too good to be true, where I can just like slam on the table and then be like, get it and take a tag and slow down or don't get it and I'll get a point. But this like does nothing for you if it gets stolen. And oh, but you don't just score it out like a regular three one. You like install double advance it right, and so then they don't get in because they're dumb, stupid runners. And then you you know next turn advance it once, score it. Now they're tagged. You have two clicks. This is like breaking news was except that was a two one um and they still have to clear it afterwards so this is just fine and this is going to make people lose a lot of money maybe with closed accounts or oh you exchange it right away oh you just give it to them oh man okay it's getting better already i take it back whatever i said that was negative i take it back it's all positive hey here's an asset his name is SIU? SIU, Southern Illinois University. A special investigators unit, more likely. Uh, but it's unique. When the turn begins, you can trash the special investigators unit to trace three. If successful, give the runner one tag. When your turn begins, so it lets you bank a click so that you can then have three clicks while they're tagged. But you have to pay three and then they have to not pay three or you know you sink a bunch of money into it. And it's got a trash cost of one. So this is another situation where I'm missing whatever is really really good about this because it looks like garbage. I'll figure it out later. It's fine. Um, we got some events, dogs. We got some sweet, sweet event action. Come on. Come on. Wake up. Uh, attitude adjustment. Draw two cards, reveal two agendas from HQ archives. Again, two for each agenda revealed, and shuffle those agendas into RD. Guys, they figured it out. They figured out that every faction needs a way to get rid of agendas. It took them six years. They had to announce the game to, that was dying before they figured out how to not rely on Jackson Howard. Uh, eavesdrop. Install eavesdrop on a piece of ice uh, with text whenever the runner encounters host ice. Trace of three. Trace of three. If successful, give the runner one tag. Uh, okay, that's legit though. I'll take that. I'll take that. That ain't too bad. Um, when they encounter trace three, give them a tag. So when they encounter, they gotta pay three to not take a tag. So they pay three on encounter. So this turns an ice, any ice you want, into a toll booth. Seems pretty good. Who does girl? What's your, what's your name, girl? Who you is? This is Arella Salvatore. Arella Salvatore. Uh, this woman's likeness is probably based on someone from FFG. I'm going to venture a guess. Um... She also got that cool, cool dragon going on. She's a sysop. Whenever an agenda is scored from this server, you can install a card from HQ, ignoring all costs, and place one advancement token on it. So, oh, look at the dragon's name is Filbert. That's cute. It's probably like the real woman's cat. That's my guess. You can install a card from HQ, ignoring all costs, and place one advancement token on it. So, if you did the thing with this thing, you're like double advance and then next turn single advance score you have two clicks left let's put another one down or another three cost agenda and it has an advancement token on it you have two clicks left so then you advance advance and score it out so you can chain together three cost agendas if you install double advance it that seems cool at the same time i feel like maybe it's not great 
and maybe it's going to end up in like some weird CI combo thing. I don't know, man. What do I know? I know, I know nothing. <coughs> All right. Can I stop coughing on you guys? It's super rude. All right, Hydra. Ten. Ten cost. Six strength. No slouch. Do three damage unless the runner is tagged. Otherwise, give the runner a tag. So, uh, gain five if the runner is tagged or give him a tag. And the run if the runner is tagged. Otherwise, give him a tag. So, if they only break some of the subroutines, they're going to walk away at least tagged. Uh, the subroutines get to their upgraded state if it's the outermost piece of ice in Acme or if it's behind a data raven. Still. 10, 10 cost. I guess it does have an end the run sub on it. So that's pretty good. I don't know, Hydra. I, I think I think if NBN can afford to play you, they will. I can see you in Asmari too because they're, they got monies. Peeping Tom. What is this guy all about? Four for four code gate. Don't love those numbers. When the runner encounters Peeping Tom, name a card type, reveal all cards on the grid. Peeping Tom gains and the runner unless the runner takes a tag for each revealed card that has a name has the named type. Interesting. So they encounter this and you're like, sure gamble. And they're like, I don't got any. And you're like, cool. I paid four. Cool. Uh, if you are Harishandra, then this is good. I guess. Or if you're Asmari and you just bounce some stuff up to their hand. I don't know, man. This feels a lot like Waver to me, which was... I guess the Waver had a trace on it, which made it really crappy, but... I don't love it. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't love it. I also tell you that I will build a Harashandra deck, and I am going to put it in. So, who's the man now, dog? You're the man now, dog. Uh, hey, boys in green. From worst to first, let's talk about how Wayland sucked forever. And now we don't. Uh, so, you got one copy of the ID. Look at that. One copy of this cool, cool neutral. The only neutral core card in the whole box. And you got all these things. Hey, cheers. Rainer Reverie. Mm mm. 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 Okay. Uh, the outfit. Game three. Whenever you take at least one bad publicity. Have you guys heard of Al Capone? He was like a mobster dude, and this is like a mob. Cool. Good talk. Uh, what is this? Broad daylight. Uh, this is something. Spoiler. I don't really like it. Four for two. When you score broad daylight, you can take a bad pub, place one agenda counter on it for each bad pub you have. So it should be pretty easy to have like two to three counters on this. Uh, do click and spend a counter to do two meat damage, use this ability only once per turn. Here's the thing that is a corp click, which is a very valuable resource. And doing it to disrupt a runner is probably like annoying and kind of fun, but like. I would kind of rather have armed intimidation and just threaten to do five meat damage or give give them two tags. So like, I don't love it. All right, what else we got here? Uh, drudge work. Place three power counters on drudge work when it's rest. Click. Host a power counter. Reveal an agenda or HQ in HQ or archives. Gain credits equal to its agenda points and then shuffle them into R and D. Guys. This is what we're seeing. We're finally seeing these decks that are like, hey, do you want to maybe not be agenda flood? How would you feel if we took those agendas and then got rid of them? See, we saw it here and we saw it on that other one. And it's like, wow, how did it take us this long to figure out that we needed to get rid of agendas from our hand? Dredge work seems real neat. Okay, this is it. These are like some of the last cards that I haven't seen yet. Uh, too big to fail with spoil. Uh, play only if you have fewer than 10 creditos. Gain 7 and take 1 bad publicity. 
Um, so that five trash costs seems pretty dumb. I think it's mostly there because, like, originally it didn't have any trash cost at all. So, like, having the option at least to trash it is probably better than nothing, right? Uh, single click to gain seven, single click to gain eight in building a better world, single click to gain ten in the outfit. Seems good. Um, let's talk about under the bus. What happened to Netrunner? He got thrown under the bus. Uh, it's a gray ops play only if the runner could get this camera to focus. Yeah, let's go. Get out of my level. I hate you. Uh, it says play only runner access at least one card, trash a connection resource, and take one bad publicity. Pretty cool. Um, building blocks cost five. Reveal a barrier from HQ. Install and res it, ignoring all costs. Oh man, that is flavor-wise is cool, but I just don't know if if I want that. Um, ignoring all costs. Tythonium, you kind of want a face check on. Bulwark is fine. Hadrian's Wall is... So you get a free install cost. You get a free res cost. You pre-res it. It's a barrier, so it's probably fine because you didn't need the... It's probably fine, right? Like, it seems good in, like, a fine way. I think it's going to be hard to fit that slot-wise into a deck. We got two ice. Um, neither of which I know anything about. So let's talk former carry. When the runner approaches a server, you can res it. If you do, move it to the innermost position of that server. The server runner's now running it. So you can just put this wherever you want when they're running. And the runner lets the runner surface two net damage. That's wild. It And it only costs two to res, and MK Ultra breaks it for three. Uh, this seems playable in our meta. If you're running like a mimic meta, like if you're playing modded or you only have a core set or something, uh, I'm not convinced because a lot of people will be on mimic then. Oh, you know what else? Nanotech is also going to make this kind of sad, but it only costs two anyway. And when you res it, you can, you know, do stuff with it. You just put it wherever you want. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Uh, blockchain, seven for four. That's also bad. Blockchain gains, Corp gains one and the runner loses one. Before all of its subroutines for every two face-up transaction operations in archives. So it's very, uh, you're probably going to have two to four most of the time. Because that's hedge fund, that's IPO, that's beanstalk. Uh, green level clearance, ultraviolet clearance. So okay, so it's gonna have an extra sub or two in front of it, and then the corp gains one, the runner loses one, and end the run. So here's the thing: paperclip is gonna break this for three, or maybe four if you have four hedge funds in your heap. Uh, if we if paperclip gets like restricted or something this is cool but it's one of those it's a multi-sub barrier that's of medium strength which means that paperclip just choose it alive the last card of the last expansion for android netrunner lady liberty that famous monument from chicago and st louis the city of angels Lady Liberty. Uh, when your turn begins, get a power counter. Triple click, add an agenda from HQ straight to your score area. Where the agenda points, agenda points equal to the exact number of hosted power counters. Limit one per deck. It's also an asset region, which we've never seen before either. But you can't combine it with Breaker Bay Grid, I guess. Or really any other region, but that's probably the big one. Wow. Wow, guys. Wow. What a journey. We made it.
who made the journey all the way to the end of Android Netrunner. I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think we'd ever see the day. And yet, here we are. Um, well, I'm excited. I'm excited to use these cards. I think they're going to be sweet and also cool and also really neat. Uh, and I think, ooh, jeez. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with these for a long time. Uh, you guys should keep going to meetups all summer long. Uh, we, I haven't played with like freaking most of the stuff from Kampala Ascendant. I'm still, you know, out with some cards from Whispers that I want to try. Uh, and then we just got this huge deluxe expansion that is probably th the best deluxe expansion. It's probably the, one of the best products they've ever released. Uh, I love it in that it gives you so many ways to get stuff uh, back, uh, get agendas back into your uh, deck. Um, I think that's really important. And so you could just buy this box and revise core set and have a totally fine uh, card pool. Uh, I'd also recommend any and all packs from the Katara cycle, especially down the White Nile, and especially Kimpala Ascendant. Those two data packs are amazing. Kimpala Ascendant is a little bit better for runners. Down the White Nile is a lot better for corpse, uh, and combined they uh, give you a lot of great options for your card pool. I think they're really awesome. Um, and then after that, I would buy. Uh, uh, you could buy those two, and then I would buy uh, the data packs from Katara next in reverse chronological order. So you would buy Kampala and Down the White Nile, and then you would do Whispers in Nalu Bale, and then Devil and the Dragon, Council of the Crest, and then do um, Sovereign Sight last. Uh, but also, of course, you can go to uh, the Shiloh Buying Guide. I uh, just recently updated it. Um, so there's more, uh, buying suggestions there, uh, based on faction and stuff. So check that out. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to keep putting out, uh, episodes for shipment from Shiloh, hopefully twice a month. If I can schedule some people to talk with me, uh, for the rest of the summer through the end of September. And then I don't know, we'll see what happens from there. Uh, my local meta is talking about uh, continuing to play Netrunner for, the next couple of years uh trying to do once a month drafts and uh new limited formats kind of like the modded format where you just pick a couple cycles and then build from there so um uh so yeah we're hoping to keep our scene alive and hopefully uh, you can get together with some of your buddies at your local store and do the same thing hey thanks for tuning in it's great to see you bud you take care and we'll see you next time on shipment from Shiloh. Mm. That is... That's, that's not very good. Who would drink this? This is just real bad. <laughs>